Dara today. What do you honestly think of Dara's management? How do you feel? Good? Bad? What are the thoughts? I mean, th- there's no... Just let's start it at a factual basis. The company's valuation is lower today than it was when Dara took over. And even if you account for the macro environment, the Nasdaq's still up 50%. He's down 50%. So it just is. Then you're like, oh, what about ride sharing? Ride sharing is down. Well, what about e-commerce? Amazon up and Wix.com and Overstock are down. So Uber should have been the leader in this category and brought everyone up and showed them how to make an efficient business model. Um, There's been an enormous talent train. The company is loaded with debt right now. It's one of the only ride sharing the companies uh, in the world with net debt. Um, it lost in food delivery to um, DoorDash, big. We went from a 60-point sort of gap to, you know, being the opposite. And that's a $30 billion mistake if you think that, you know, Uber could have been DoorDash. So, um, you know, by all objective measures, it hasn't succeeded from a financial standpoint. So, I, you know, he's a nice guy. He cleaned up the company in terms of things that were sort of excess from a culture standpoint. He was a diplomat. He was able to get the company public. But in terms of hiring talent, innovating and succeeding from a financial standpoint, you know, it's not it hasn't happened. It's a it's an F, you know, other than that. I- he was great. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he was a, look. I will say, look, look. Here's I'll take self criticism. We were aggressive barbarians at the gate, trying to make uh, uh, ride sharing work because we had to because of whether regulations and all that. That That's couldn't true. have gone on forever, right? Are we gonna, are we going to go back to that time though of aggressive barbarians at the gate and not the ping pong offsite <laughs> retreats, yoga and kombucha bullshit that we've been living in? <laughs> <the> last <time>. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a reversion to that, yes, but um, Uber was first. We were first, remember, 2017, Uber's problem started sort of in in 2017, right after Trump was elected, and there was a lot of anger in the electorate, especially in California, about what is happening in the world. And it was started to turn on corporations, you know, who didn't previously want to be in politics at all. And it started with Travis sort of being invited to a business council with President Trump, along with Elon Musk and Mary Barra from GM and whatever. And somehow we got the, you know, tainted with that. And that sort of led to a cascade of events. And then, you know, the whole for the last four years through 2021, kombucha, you know, keen, you know, keen, where's the quinoa? There's not enough quinoa in the salad line when I get there. <laughs> and <laughs> I think austerity turns us back. I think yeah. investors are, start, are going to say, look, I need someone who's going to go through the hard times. So their appreciation for an entrepreneur who has to, who has to be bullheaded goes up. Um, but I, I, think this was a, I think this was a job security. When you see half of your you know, friendship group lose their jobs, your yeah. desire for quinoa goes down a little bit with the realization that you actually have a job. Yeah. Um, maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, unless you really are entitled. Um, the final one on Uber I do just want to ask is, um, and again, I can't remember who it was, um, but someone asked this and I liked it. Here you go, Emil. Travis and you, you are back running Uber. You said um, you know, before about you know, the lost opportunity in, uh, food. You spoke about Uber Freight. What are the opportunities that you would have jumped on? What would you not have jumped on? Yeah, I think we, instead of buying um, Kareem in the Middle East, Postmates, Jump Bike, I think all of those will be a hundred percent write downs. Those are some of the worst acquisitions done in tech. Um, Maybe Postmates may be the worst acquisition done in tech in the last five years. It was for a $3 billion company that was like going to be a zero within three months. And we got nothing out of it, no market share gain, nothing. So there was just a bunch of just bad. I sort of, and I think Dara was trying to repeat the Expedia thing, which is like buy all these random things, like stitch them together, and like that's a platform. It's kind of not how it works. Um, so I would have beaten Door, we would have beaten DoorDash. Guarantee we were ahead by 30 points when Travis and I left. So letting that atrophy was not an option. Um, I think we would have had an Instacart competitor way earlier. And we would have been, if not ahead of Instacart by now, but neck and neck with them in every continent, just not one continent like Instacart's in. So even if you think Instacart's a $15 billion business, I think we could have built a $60 billion business globally on that on top of Eats which was another another 60 to 100 billion if we'd won DoorDash. 
and uh, we were going to beat Deliveroo. And then the rides business, where Uber, to, to Dar's credits, winning in the U.S. against Lyft, another sixty billion. So you're talking about a two hundred billion dollar business without any creativity. This is just winning where we should have won and beating Instacart um, when we should have beat Instacart.